method of increasing the conductivity or modifying the property of pure semiconductor is called doping. So, by doping, the intrinsic semiconductor can be converted into extrinsic semiconductor. So, what is doping here? Doping is defined as the process of deliberate addition of desired impurity atoms. Why deliberate? We are only adding it. Deliberate addition of desired, we have to decide which atom to be added, which impurity atom to be added, so that we get our desired result. So, it is a process of deliberate addition of desired impurity atoms. Why we are adding? To modify the electrical property of the pure semiconductor. What is our aim? To uh, enhance the conductivity, but that is also in a controlled manner. We just can't go on increase the dopants or the uh, impurity atom so that the, in, uh, the conductivity of pure semiconductor is increased to infinity. That is not possible. So, it should be in a controlled manner. So, when you study the definition of doping, we have to be very careful in writing the words that doping is the process of deliberate addition of desired impurity atoms to modify the properties of pure semiconductor in a controlled manner. So, we will see how these are all done. So, doping is done by adding either pentavalent impurity atom or trivalent impurity atom. So, pentavalent means what? There will be 5 valence electrons and trivalent atoms will have 3 valence electrons. Now, this doping this uh, pentavalent impurity atoms and trivalent impurity atoms are called as dopants in general. So, how to select the dopants? That pentavalent impurity atoms can be antimony, bismuth, arsenic etcetera or the trivalent impurity atoms are otherwise called as dopant atoms. Examples of trivalent impurity atoms are aluminum and indium. Now, we will see how the addition of the pentavalent impurity atoms and trivalent impurity atoms are modifying the energy level diagrams. So, first we will take the case of pentavalent impurity atoms say antimony. The four valence electrons of antimony will form four covalent bonds with the neighboring germanium atom because this antimony atom, the dopant atom will take the place of original germanium atom. So, the fifth electron will be left free in the crystal. So, that will be in addition to the already existing charge carriers. So, such extra electrons donated to the crystal by the pentavalent impurity atom all will occupy an energy level which is very close to the conduction band. This energy level is called donor energy level because it is going to donate electrons to the conduction band. So, now if you see the gap, the energy gap between this donor energy level and the conduction band is only 0 0.045 electron volts which is very small. So, that electrons can be easily shifted from this donor energy level to the conduction band which can contribute to the current. So, we can see here that the conductivity of the original semiconducting material is increased to very uh, great extent by the addition of these dopant atoms because every dopant atom added will contribute one free electron to the crystal lattice. And when you take choose the dopant atoms, we have to keep in mind that the addition of dopant atoms should not distort the crystal lattice and the concentration should be only 1 percent. Next we will see how the addition of trivalent impurity atom is modifying the energy level diagram. So, I have taken the example of aluminum the aluminum atom will take the place of germanium atom and the three electrons valence electrons of aluminum form three covalent bonds and one covalent bond the fourth one is incomplete because aluminum has only three valence electrons. So, this incomplete covalent bond will co contribute like a hole to the crystal lattice. So, the hole as I told you it is a positive charge. So, this positive charge holes will increase the number of holes in the valence band. Now, if you see such holes will occupy energy level closer to the valence band and this energy level is called acceptor energy level because this acceptor energy level 
will accept electrons from the valence band. So, leaving behind a hole here. So, thereby the number of holes in the valence band will go on increasing. So, by addition of pentavalent impurity atom, more number of negatively charged electrons are added to the crystal lattice. Such type of semiconductor produced will have negatively charged electrons as majority carrier. So, it is called as n type. So, you can see everywhere n number n letter is there you can remember easily. Pentavalent will give more negatively charged electrons. So, that type of semiconducting material obtained by doping pentavalent impurity atom is called n type semiconductor n type extrinsic semiconductor. If you see here in the case of trivalent its acceptor energy level is produced acceptor. So, this acceptor energy level increase the positively charged holes. So, the semiconductor material produced as a result of addition of acceptor donor atoms is called p type. So, you can easily remember from these underlined letters. So, p type semiconductor has holes positively charged holes as the majority carriers and electrons as the minority carriers and n type semiconductor has negatively charged electrons as majority carriers and holes as a minority carriers. So, in the case of extrinsic semiconductor which are of two types that is n type and p type in n type we have number density of electrons more than number density of holes and in p type number density of holes is greater than number density of electrons. So, this we have to keep in mind. Now, just because the addition of uh, pentavalent impurity atom is giving more electron to the crystal lattice, the crystal or the solid will not be charged at all because on the whole if you see the number of positively charged carriers and negatively charged carriers will be the same. So, this question will be asked in the board whether the n type and p type semiconductor materials are charged or not. So, now from this expression we understand that number density of electron is more in the case of n type semiconductor. So, when you draw the conduction uh, that is energy band diagram you have to be very careful in drawing more number of showing more number of electrons here and less number of holes in the valence band. Similarly, here also because holes are majority carriers in p type. So, we have to show more number of holes in valence band compared to the number of electrons shown in the conduction band because this energy level diagram is very very important from exam point of view and we should not forget to draw this donor energy level in n type and acceptor energy level in p type. So, practice this diagram nicely. One more thing also you have to remember that the extrinsic semiconductor the conductivity is due to both intrinsic charge carriers as well as the charge carriers donated to the crystal by the dopant atoms. So, it is in addition to that. So, in all the three cases that is intrinsic semiconductor and the two types of extrinsic semiconductor that is p type and n type the current is due to both hole current and the electron current. So, this we should not forget. Next topic we will study about p n junction diode. A p n junction is formed when a p type semiconducting material and n type semiconducting material is closely placed or actually one is fused into the other. So, in order to produce this what they will do? They will take a wafer of n type material and into that they will introduce suppose they introduce aluminum foil or aluminum layer into this and heat at very high temperature then a p n junction diode is produced. Likewise, if on n on p type wafer if they introduce impurity atom like pentavalent then again p n junction can be produced. Now, we will see what happens when such junction is formed. So, on the p side we know that the holes are positively charged holes are majority carriers and negatively charged electrons are minority carriers. But in the case of n region we know that negatively charged electrons are 
majority carriers and possibly charged holes are minority carriers. So, because of this difference in the concentration, there will be diffusion of the charge carriers across the junction. That is, electrons will diffuse into the P region and hole will diffuse into the N region. So, because of this diffusion, what happens? The electrons which are leaving this N region will leave behind a positively charged ion in the crystal lattice because this is produced by what doping with the pentavalent impurity atom. So, this extra electron when it is crossing the junction it will leave behind positively charged ion. Similarly, when the hole is diffusing from pre region to n region it will leave behind immobile negative ion because here the electron is uh, electron is gained here electron is lost. So, because of the shifting of hole means or losing of positive charge is equivalent to the gain of negative charge. So, we can say that a negatively charged bound ion is left here and partially charged bound ion is left there. Similarly, when more charge carriers are diffusing, they leave behind immobile ions on both the sides of the junction. So, it will be as though a fictitious battery is connected across the junction like n terminal of that is connected to the p side and positive terminal is connected to the n side. So, this immobile ions accumulated near the junction generates a potential barrier. So, this is called potential barrier. So, these are charged no doubt, but they cannot move. So, these are immobile charges therefore, they are called potential barrier. Now, this potential barrier region if you see there are no free charges. So, they are devoid of free charges. So, this region is called depletion region. This region is called depletion region. So, the depletion region formation and the potential barrier formation is very important question. This depletion region is created because of the removal of moving charges from here and the accumulation of immobile charge carriers develop a develop an electric field or potential difference across the junction that difference is called potential barrier. Now, we will see how this p n junction diode is utilized in the electronic devices. So, we will see the conduction. The conduction of current through the p n junction diode will be studying. In that case, we will have two cases forward biasing and reverse biasing. So, first I will teach you about forward biasing. In forward biasing, the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the P side and negative terminal of the battery is connected to the N side. So, in this case we know that the majority carriers in P side are repelled by this positive potential. So, they try to move across the junction. Similarly, the majority carriers electrons which are negatively charged are repelled by this negative potential applied. So, they try to cross the junction. So, the majority carriers are repelled by this applied voltage. Suppose, you take the applied voltage as V and this potential barrier as V B. If you see here because of the positive connection here the potential barrier is up opposed. So, the effective potential barrier becomes V minus V B. So, barrier potential decreases therefore, the depletion region also becomes thin. In forward bias depletion region becomes thin. So, in the case of reverse biasing just the opposite we have to do the P type will be connected to the negative terminal of the battery. and 
positive will be connected to the n type. Now, in this case what happens? The majority carriers are attracted away from the junction because the negative potential applied here attracts the holes away from the junction and positive potential applied here attracts the electrons away from the junction. So, the only possibility of current is due to the motion of minority charge carriers. Now, in this case if you consider the applied voltage aids the barrier potential. So, the effective barrier potential will becomes will become V plus V B. Therefore, barrier potential is increased and the depletion region becomes very thick. So, in forward biasing what are the things happening? Potential barrier is opposed and depletion region becomes thin and resistance of diode is decreased. So, conductivity increased. The opposite things we have to write here. In this case potential barrier is aided depletion region becomes thick resistance resistance increases conductivity decreases. So, this biasing we have to understand very clearly forward biasing means P type to positive terminal. So, this P P out remember in reverse biasing P is connected to the negative terminal reverse biasing. So, in reverse biasing these things are happening and in forward biasing these things are happening. So, we can draw the characteristic curves in forward biasing and reverse biasing of P n junction diode. So, how this the conduction how it is taking place we will see. So, now in the case of forward biasing as I told you the majority charge carriers are repelled and they try to cross junction. So, when they are crossing junction they meet each other that is an electron can fall into the hole. So, the electron hole recombination will take place. So, when electron hole recombination take place what happens for every electron